Hi guys, what's up? This is Luke Hacker here from LukeHacker.com and today I'm going to review the Blink Amazon Outdoor Camera. Yes, Blink is the brand of equipment, appliances that Amazon has created to make your smart home even smarter and it's specializing on cameras like these. So these um, is costing about, uh, well, the price for these two cameras has been uh, 142 euros. I'm living in Switzerland, so I had to purchase it and have it delivered from Italy, from Amazon Italy. Here's the proof. Oh, you cannot see much, but trust me, you'll have to trust me on that, 142 euros. So in US dollars, that's around $160. And I think that these cameras here have a lot of value for money. The reason I'm saying that is because I needed a set of cameras that would not connect to the power and that would definitely stream both ways, audio and video, wirelessly. Also, from a certain distance, you will see why. I've been quite impressed, both from the uh, quality of the audio, the video, the ease of use and the complexity, the sophistication you can put in place here. The price, I think it's a steal. You might find other cameras out there for cheaper price. So for one thing, I tell you quite uh, bluntly, these cameras do not have a 360 or 180 degrees panoramic view. You cannot tilt them, you cannot remotely tilt them or pan, but they are just going to be there fixed. But I think they're doing their job pretty well. So let's get on to it and uh, let's start with the review. Here we are guys, this is the Blink Outdoor Camera Review from Amazon. This just arrived and I've only taken one out to connect and configure. You can see it here, all connected. You see the blue LED here, it means that it's recognizing my movement. And if I tilt it, you can see on the upper part of the camera, this is the motion and light sensor. Then you see the camera and uh, these guys is just working with battery. So let's see how it works. I'll show it to you with the second one that's still in the box. Now that we know and have a certain that it works because I have linked the camera to the sync module that I have installed here. You see, this is connecting to the Wi-Fi network and the green light tells that it's up and running. Well, the blue light tells that it's connected to the Wi-Fi network. The curious thing that I'm trying to do is to connect it to see what's the range of reception for this thingy. I have placed it there outside. It's a good uh, 10 to 12 meters from the sync module. But the real challenge that I have that I want to try out with is to put one there because that's why I bought it, because I need to place an outdoor monitoring camera Wi-Fi on the garden house. So before I go up there, let me show you how you actually operate one, how you set your first Blink outdoor camera up. Now, as I told you, I had left one camera in the box. You can see that over here. It's completely sealed. And there's the batteries there, lithium batteries. You have a holder for the camera that I'm going to have to install. And the way to install it is just by plugging it in here. But then I'm not a fan of holes. I don't like drilling holes. So what I'll probably do is, uh, yeah, on the garden house that's made of hole of wood, I will definitely uh, drill a couple of holes. But the other camera, I will place here, there. And that's concrete just outside. So I will not want to drill any holes. Most probably I will use very strong adhesive tape. Now, let me show you how you set these up for your first use. 
the first, remove everything here. I don't know why they placed so much plastics on this thing, but it's a fact they did, it's a lot. There's a, another one here, I think, that I need to remove. Let me see, yeah. At first I was not sure whether I was peeling off something that was not supposed to come off, but then, yeah. Hmm, this might be difficult, guys. This might be a difficult adventure. Now, you're going to need something to open this up because the batteries goes in, go in here and you will need to open it. Um, I think you can also, if you're using, you can either attach it to the the power but if you don't then like I will be doing I will be using it with battery you remove this cap and it's like that and you can take a coin or anything else I just took this rounded knife over here that serves the purpose and I will uh, there is actually it's not the best I have to admit it should be open now but is it really unscrewed, completely unscrewed? Apparently not. Oh yes, it was, it was. Now remove another layer of plastics from the batteries. One battery, two batteries. And another thing you will need to do before anything else is to, uh, and that's happened to me with the other one, if you close it, you are actually going to need the serial number or the QR code to install the camera to set it up before you close it. So note it down. What I will do is I'll note it down with what I don't know. So most probably I'll uh, take another shot after I have linked it or written down the number, okay? Now the list is done guys, and uh, I've written down the code, the serial number, so I'm closing it now because the batteries are locked in. I'm not even going to put these back because uh, I will want to install these here and effectively just take it and you need to push it a bit, a bit hard. I have to say it's not the most practical thing. I mean, once it's in, it's in. At the very beginning, you're kind of worried that you're pushing it too far and this thing is going to break, but it doesn't. You see it's blinking red. So now I will switch the view from this view to... To this view. So I've now switched to my phone. Let's go ahead and look for the Blink app that I've already installed. As I told you, I did install the Sync module already. The performance is, uh, is good and the procedure is really easy. So that's exactly how you will be guided through the procedure. I noted down the serial number. You might have used the QR code, but in this instance, since I had to shoot this video, I've just written it down on a piece of paper and now I am reporting it here into the application. I'm not really afraid that you guys can do much with it unless you are in the vicinity and even then you're probably going to see only what the video looks like from the garden house terrace. So it's not something I'm afraid of. You need to disarm the system every time you add something. So this will take just a couple of seconds and here while you're waiting for the camera to be configured, what's actually doing, what the application is actually doing now is searching for the camera. The moment it'll have locked the camera, it will download the firmware. That's the, going to be the first thing. Here you go, updating firmware. This procedure, all in all, is going to take anything between one minute up to three minutes. It's not really um, hyper long, but uh, you know, something annoying. Let's say you will have time for a coffee, for an espresso coffee if you have a machine. Uh, in the meantime, uh, a quick 
overview from the application uh, around positioning your camera. So what to avoid, waving tree branches and shrubbery, the sun in the sky, <laughs> vehicles or pedestrians in the distance. I guess the pedestrians and vehicles might cause some damage. And visitors approaching directly toward the camera. Side to side movement is more easily detected than forward back. So these are uh, honestly just some common sense but these cameras are so small, the factor of size is so small that you will easily be able to put them somewhere where you're going to be able to uh, hide them from the view. Now, uh, here we go. Uh, the camera is appearing here. It's already connected. It's updated. And now we're going to see um, what happens with I'm arming the system again. You remember I had to disarm it. The home system is armed again. What armed mean is that it's going to record depending on the movement that's perceived by the movement sensor that's uh, embedded, integrated. See here, in fact, that's a motion sensor already sending me a notification. And let's have a look here. You see the talk button, hold to talk. And here I am, guys. You can see me in all my splendor. It's working. That's what I'm saying. It's working. Yes, it's working pretty nicely. Hmm. Now, Here, again, a bit of a surprise, uh, a fox visiting us. And yes, guys, I have to admit, I've been really impressed, as I told you before, by the Blink outdoor cameras. Not only are they come in cheap, they're very small, they're pretty well done, the quality of the plastics is quite nice at the touch. Not that you will be touching them much, but it's really nice to see how these small devices have been produced with uh, quite some quality. And the quality comes not only in the material that they have used, but also in the software that I hope and I believe since Amazon is behind them, will become and keep being updated. So really just expect the automation in to increase further. I unfortunately cannot use Alexa here because in Switzerland that's not available. But, uh, you know, hopefully they're going to open it up to Google Assistants and other assistants so that I can try it out. So the things that I like the most about the camera, they're small, they're wireless, they work on battery, and the duration, at least the... The duration that they claim is two years. Can you see that here? Two years battery duration. I guess it, it really depends on the use that you're making of it, but these are not cameras that are supposed to be out and just keeping um, the recording function on for uh, 24 hours, 24 seven. They're not doing that. All they're supposed to do, and that's exactly what it needed, is to be placed somewhere to have the sensor switching them on and it's quite instant. The functionality, it's quite surprisingly fast in terms of reaction. And the quality of the video, you can adjust the quality of the video from low to standard to high, which is 1080, so HD, not bad for cameras this small. And so pretty much they're going to record video whenever they are going to capture movement. They are going to sense movement. They're going to immediately send you a snapshot of the five seconds up to 30 seconds. You can configure that for the duration of the movement and after they um, sense the movement. Now, the one thing I've not been able to try out yet is the subscription. I've been reading that the Blink Outdoor cameras do have a subscription that allows you to save the video, upload them on the cloud. I couldn't really find this uh, option anywhere. This is something that I found out about other products from Amazon. They're not very well uh, into providing clear in instructions as to how to go about things. I think that perhaps now I'm, getting, I'm having a trial subscription that I activated automatically. I didn't see any notification in the application telling me that I would have had to activate it. So I'm just assuming it's going to go on for some time and it'll come the time when it's going to tell me, listen, if you want to keep your list of recordings, then you will have to pay something. The other thing I've noticed is that whenever a clip, I kept it at, at the standard duration of five seconds and you could see, uh, you know, the, uh, the the footage from the fox that it's recorded, it's actually out there at 25 meters distance across the road, uh, outside, and the router is in the completely opposite direction, indoors, completely in the middle of the house with walls, uh, windows in between. So the sync module is doing a fantastic job. I can but recommend it, guys. So it's really, really working nicely. 
But as I told you, uh, you know, whenever I go to the video section and I saw and I see these five second long snippets that it captures automatically whenever it captures movement, it senses movement, then I can see that storage percentage increases quite fast. I think that there is a small buffer of space, buffer storage that the cameras have integrated. That's at least my own assumption. I might be wrong. They might be automatically uploading it on the cloud. I'm not sure about that. I actually think it's uh, the storage is uh, uh, is embedded just to uh, provide this small buffer. And it's really, really small. Um, be careful with one thing. You might not want that a clip is recorded every single time you have a movement, at least not in areas where you know you're going to have movement. Reason being, uh, I've ended up after half an hour, after one hour, when I tested it yesterday with 72 notifications and 72 snippets of five seconds and the storage space was almost, uh, um, I'm not saying full, but roughly 50%. So just be warned, I had to deactivate it and just keep the one that's outdoors at the moment active. And you saw the fox coming in, so it's a testament to the fact that the quality of the video, the quality I kept actually at the lowest, I decreased the data quality, the video quality of the outdoor camera to the lowest possible, and the image was still, still quite crisp. I mean, cool enough for me. I don't want to have a professional solution. All I need is a way to monitor and be sure that I know and then receive a notification whenever the camera captures movement. It's doing that fantastically. It's done for the outdoors, so it's completely protected against the elements. It can rain, it can snow, it's actually snowing outside at the moment, and this will work like a charm. Let's actually do a small test and let's see what it captures, because at the moment, they are, um, it's, uh, it's quite dark. And you're probably not going to be able to see much, but let's see. Blink, an Amazon company, I've activated the Face ID, you see here the images. Those are the two images that I've selected as capture images uh, to refer to the both both the cameras. And now I'm uh, I'm trying to activate the live view. Let's see if anything comes up. From screen to screen is not going to be great. And I have to admit the reception from outdoors with all the walls that are in between us, the windows. It's probably it's it's not great. So it might take a few seconds. It's actually taking even too long. It's taking longer than... Oh, live view failed. Let's try again. Let's try again. I was so sure it's always been working nice, but here you go. It doesn't work until, you wor until it doesn't work. Yeah, you see, that's the live one with the noise from the outside. So it works pretty nicely. Uh, the occasional glitch in this case, in my case, I think I'm really putting it to the, I'm putting the test of the distance to the extreme, not only because of the distance. I think that in terms of distance, these would be capable to do much more with the sync module. You see the sync module, I didn't show you much of that, but it's essentially a small hub, a wireless hub that it's dedicated to the cameras. You want the hub, to be in close proximity to your wireless router. In my case, it was close to an access point to a range extender, so it's perfectly located, and that is going to create and manage an independent, dedicated channel for communicating both ways with the cameras. Now, in this case, you know, I have so many obstacles in between the sync module and the camera that's outdoor that I'm even surprised it connects at all. It does it. I am fully satisfied. I didn't manage yet to connect the other camera outside in the terrace that I have here outside the windows. The one thing that I could say about this camera that I really don't like, it's, it's nothing to do with the hardware, it's more to do with the services and with the software. I think that the software, despite its many functionalities, it uh, feels very aseptic, it feels very proprietary, it feels very closed. It means that I am sure being an Amazon company, that the fact that it connects, it can integrate with Amazon Alexa, 
is on purpose, they should, though, also open it up to other systems and make it an open system. Effectively, what's it going to be? It's only going to help them sell more of it because the functionality is great, the hardware is great, the quality is great, it works wirelessly, it doesn't need power outside of the battery, and uh, it's nice to see they're so small that I was even surprised they are doing things that work that well. So Amazon, please think about that, open it up to other assistants so that we can make our smart homes always smarter. And please activate the Amazon Alexa assistant in Switzerland. That's something we need. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. I know we didn't go in depth, but I concentrated on ease of use, price and functionality. So hopefully you're going to get some useful information out of it. All the best and let me know what you think about the Blink outdoor cameras. Ciao.